talk about Linux, we tend to focus on the present, on a single distribution, its latest version, the technical choices being made. Rarely do we stop to consider the bigger picture or the trajectory that the world of Linux distributions is following. And yet, there's a question that has been with me for years. Can we truly measure how widespread Linux distributions are on the desktop? The answer has always been no. We have no objective tools, no shared metrics, and the few data points we do have, from DistroWatch to Steam, from Stack Overflow to Reddit polls, are fragmented, partial, and often misleading. But they still tell us something. They don't offer absolute truth, but they trace a direction. That's why I tried to combine them, assigning each source a weight based on its reliability. The result isn't scientific, but it's a plausible snapshot of the current landscape. For years, we relied on intuition and lived experience. We knew Ubuntu was dominant, Mint was user-friendly, and Arch was for power users. Not because the stats said so, but because we saw it happening. Linux has always been more perceived than measured. But today I want to do something different. Not a review, not a ranking, but a broader look. A vision that tries to trace the dynamics we've experienced, the ones we're going through now, and those that might shape our future. So... How has the world of Linux distributions really changed, and where is it going? There was a time when Linux felt like a wild laboratory of ideas, a romantic, anarchic, sometimes chaotic era, and precisely for that reason, deeply fascinating. The year 2010 symbolized that moment, over 300 active distributions, each with its own distinct identity. Ubuntu was at the center, but it was surrounded by a diverse galaxy. Mandriva, Gentoo, OpenSUSE, PC Linux OS, Sabayon, Puppy Linux, Debian. It was a living, polyphonic, truly free ecosystem. But even then, something was changing beneath the surface. For the first time, fragmentation was no longer seen as a strength, but as a problem to solve. In those years, three major projects emerged. GNOME 3, which ditched the classic desktop metaphor for a radical minimalist interface. KDE 4, bold and experimental, launched with bugs but rich in visual innovation, and System D, a new init system meant to replace SysVinit, for some a leap forward bat, for others a betrayal of Unix principles. It ignited one of the fiercest ideological battles in free software history. Meanwhile, Wayland was introduced in 2008 as the future replacement for the aging X11. Still far from adoption at the time, but already present as a quiet promise of a different future. This marked the beginning of a deep, often silent transformation, not just from within, but pushed by the outside world. Open source began to permeate everything. Linux, once the domain of pioneers and hobbyists, entered big business, global infrastructure, and the data center. Microsoft, Google, Meta, all began, in one way or another, to work with Linux. A once unthinkable scenario. In the years that followed, distributions began to shrink in number. Projects without structure collapsed, forks without vision disappeared. Linux began to mature, and with that maturity came compromise. Debian, once austere and conservative, opened up to a new generation of users. Ubuntu lost its edge and narrowed its focus to Snap. Fedora evolved into a technological laboratory, balancing cutting-edge changes with stability. Arch became a technical reference, giving rise to a whole ecosystem. The Linux world was no longer a chaotic jungle. It began to organize itself into coherent blocks, moving toward efficiency, toward simplification. But that came at a cost. Individualism gave way to convergence. In 2025, there are around 250 active distributions, but the number means little without direction. The first clear trend, Debian rules the ecosystem, not necessarily as a standalone distro, but as a foundation. Mint, Ubuntu, Pop! OS, MX Linux, Kali, Debian, all Debian-based. The APT ecosystem alone accounts for 60 to 70% of desktop Linux usage. That means one thing, standardization. The second major block is RPM-based, led by Fedora and its enterprise-oriented ecosystem. A more institutional, more controlled world, but a technically advanced one. Fedora is Red Hat's testbed for the future. The third is Arch, not just a distro, but a philosophy. The idea that you can build everything from scratch as you like. The success of Manjaro, Garuda, and Endeavor OS proves it. Overall, the picture today is much more compact and cohesive than it used to be. But the real revolution is elsewhere. It's called immutability. Distributions like Fedora Silverblue, NixOS, and Vanilla OS are rewriting the rules, 
atomic updates, rollback, read-only file systems, less freedom, maybe, but fewer bugs, less maintenance, more predictability. The future, for better or worse, seems to be heading in that direction. We talk about reproducibility, but maybe we should call it what it is. Extreme automation, total control. We're moving toward advanced, hyper-efficient systems designed to work identically, everywhere, all the time. And in that world, there's less and less room for improvisation, for passion, for amateur projects. The user base has grown dramatically, bigger, more diverse, but also less ideological. The noob who once discovered Linux seeking freedom is now a YouTuber who switches to Cache OS for its aesthetic. And while everything becomes more stable, more secure, more controlled, something deep is fading. In place of generalist distros, we now have small, highly focused systems designed to do one thing and do it well. It's the age of surgical specialization coupled with a kind of standardization that feels like groupthink. This isn't a theory, it's already happening. The quiet adoption of System D, the obsession with universal packaging, and the slow decline of legendary projects like Gen2, Slackware, Magea. Even OpenSUSE is struggling. And that's fine. It's the natural course of things. Don't get me wrong, I'd love nothing more than to see Linux adopted globally. But here's the real question. Linux is becoming professional, reliable, supported, even enterprise approved. But it's also becoming quiet, clean, predictable. The distros that can't keep up, they vanish. The legendary ones like Slackware or Gen2 survive only through tiny, loyal communities. New users won't even know they exist. They'll install Mint or Fedora, update with a click, and move on. That's not the problem. The problem is, what remains of the Linux we once knew? This isn't nostalgia for its own sake. It's about the essence. The idea that Linux was freedom, community, exploration. Today we talk about app stores, UX, rolling releases, universal formats. It's easier, yes, but is it still ours? Once you had to learn to write a bash script. Now you just search for a plugin in the software center. The truth is, we don't need to create new distros anymore. We need to keep them alive, give them purpose, build real communities. The real challenge isn't technical, it's cultural. This trauma will shake even the strongest projects and it will shake us too. Can we grow without losing who we are? Speak to the world without losing our voice? Maybe we don't need to save the world anymore. Maybe now we just need to save Linux from itself. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. And above all, thanks for being part of this story.